Today I'm going to talk to you about saltwater pumps and powerheads. Now you notice when you come to our page, at the top we have a video. We try to include lots of videos on our website to help make your purchasing decision easier and help you find the right product. In the top left corner of the video, you'll see an icon for a playlist. So usually we'll include multiple videos here that relate to the subject or product category. On the left hand side, you'll notice our product filters. At the top, you're able to sort by brand. Here you can select whether you need an inline pump, an in-tank circulation pump, or a submersible pump. And finally, you can filter by price as well. Now, when deciding what type of pump or powerhead to select for your aquarium, first you need to consider the size of your aquarium. And if you're thinking about a return pump, you need to consider the size of your drains. Uh, a one inch drain can only drain about 800 gallons an hour. An inch and a half drain can drain 1,500 gallons an hour. And a two inch drain can drain a little bit over 2,000 gallons an hour. Today we're going to start by looking at inline pumps. Now, when selecting a pump, if you're thinking of a return pump, obviously you need to consider the size of the aquarium. You usually want to have your return pump cycle the water 10 to 12 times an hour through the aquarium. So therefore, if you have a 100 gallon aquarium, you want to put about 1,000 to 1,200 gallons an hour through the aquarium. 200 gallon tank, about 2,000 to 2,400 gallons an hour. Let's look here at the Synchra Silent Series pumps. These can be run submersibly or externally. When you come into a specific product, you'll notice an overview tab, a specs tab, which will give you the size of the pump, and then the flow chart, which will be either a chart or graph to show you about the flow that a particular pump produces. Let's look here at the Synchra 5.0. You notice it draws only 105 watts. It pumps 1,321 gallons an hour at zero feet. At three feet, it pumps 1,163 gallons an hour. And at five feet, 1,070 gallons an hour. So you need to consider how high you'll be pumping the water. Most aquarium setups, you're pumping the water between four and five feet high. Therefore, the Synchro 5.0 would make a good return pump for a 100 gallon aquarium. Now, if we go back to our inline pumps and power heads, you'll notice that the Awaki pumps, the little giant pumps, all of the reef flow pumps, and the WLIM wave series pumps, these are what I'd call the old school external or inline pumps. They have heavy duty uh, plastic uh, volute on the front. Here you'll see that's the intake. So for any inline pump, you'll need to drill a hole in the sump. Um, where it'll draw water into the intake and then the outlet of the pump will be plumbed to the return of the aquarium. Now these inline pumps can also be used as closed loop pumps to create added flow within the aquarium. In that case you'll plumb the intake uh, from a hole or bulkhead in the aquarium and then the return will return directly into the aquarium. The purpose of a closed loop pump is to create added flow within the aquarium itself. A return pump obviously cycles water from the sump back into the aquarium. Now, my preference for an inline pump would be the Reef Flow series. Uh, the Sapper Dart Gold Hybrid is a great pump uh, for a 100 to 200 gallon reef aquarium. I've used a lot of these over the years. They run super quiet. They only draw about 147 watts and uh, they produce a lot of flow. The nice thing about these hybrid pumps from Reef Flow is that they come with two impellers. The smaller impeller will pump 2,400 gallons an hour while the larger impeller pumps 4,300 gallons an hour. Now, there are smaller uh, inline pumps, such as the Waukee and the Little Giant. Um, honestly, I think they're a little bit loud and they don't create nearly as much flow as the Reflows. So, Reflow will be my top picks. And then the W Limb series uh, are very good for extra large aquariums. We use these on our big 800 gallon tank at the store. You'll notice the half horse pump, uh, if you look at the specs, it does draw a lot of electricity, 5.4 amps, but it also pumps. 8,400 gallons an hour at five feet of head. So in terms of your inline pumps, I definitely consider the Reflow as a good series or the WLM for super large systems. You can use the Synchra or uh, Lifeguard as uh, inline pumps as well, although since they can be used submersibly, I would prefer to plumb, plumb them submersibly because obviously if you have a small drip or leak, it's going to drip into your sump. Now a new uh, offering on the market is the Ecotech Marine Vector Pump. This is a DC pump, so it has a very low energy consumption. If you look at the specs, the M1 model pumps 2,000 gallons an hour and only draws 80 watts. 
The L1 model is the larger size. It pumps 3,100 gallons an hour and only draws 130 watts. The nice thing about these DC pumps by Ecotech is that they have different modes. You can set them up as a return pump and set them at a constant speed, but you can adjust the flow uh, and program it how much flow you want to put into the aquarium up to the maximum available for that model. Now if you use this as a closed loop pump where it's drawing from the aquarium, you can actually select a variable flow mode such as the lagoon mode or the reef crest mode or the gyre mode to create changing flow within the aquarium. These vector pumps can be plumbed externally or submersibly, which makes them uh, very adaptable to most systems, and they do include the controller as well. So there you have an overview of our inline pumps. Let's go ahead and clear that and look at our in-tank cir circulation pumps. Now, if you can say the in-tank circulation pump uh, is very important for most aquariums, you want to consider the types of corals you're keeping and the flow rate that you'll need. If your return pump is only turning over the volume of the aquarium about 10 or 12 times an hour, you may need to add more flow via an uh, in-tank circulation pump. Now, the least expensive option would be, go, would be to go with something that's uh, not controllable, such as the Hydra Coralia Evolution Circulation Pump. Now, these turn on at a constant speed. They don't have any variation to them. However, you can pair those with the Coralia Smart Wave Pump Controller, which will turn, if you have two of them, it'll turn one off and the other on alternating them, which does create some changing flow within the aquarium for a very reasonable cost. Uh, other constant flow powerheads such as the MaxiJet are great for smaller tanks. Also you have the CSA Voyager pumps, the Xtreme series by CSA as well, and then the Tunzi NanoStream non-controllable pumps. These are all low cost options for adding more flow to your reef aquarium. Now, some of my personal favorites are the Ecotech Marine MP series powerheads. These are really nice because the motor is actually on the outside of the aquarium, which keeps heat out of the aquarium, and the propeller is on the inside of the tank. Now, they work through the glass panel with via a magnet on each side, and they're highly controllable, and they come with an included controller, so it makes setup very easy. Everything you need is all in one box. So Ecotech are definitely some of my top picks for controllable powerheads. Now if you have the Neptune Systems Apex controllers, you can go with the, their new Wave powerheads, which put out a lot of flow. You're looking at over 4,000 gallons an hour of available flow, but you do need to have the Apex, Apex Lite, or Apex Junior in order to control these Neptune Systems pumps. I think they're great quality pumps. They put out a very broad, wide flow, and uh, obviously highly controllable. Now, another option, an old standard for controllable powerheads would be the Tunzi Turbell Stream Pumps. These uh, have very high flow rates available all the way up to over 3,000 gallons an hour. They have a magnet mount that's included with them and the adapter allows you to aim them in almost any direction very easily, which is nice. Now, with the Tunzi controllable pumps, you'll need to have either the multi-controller or the single controller in order to control them. So that's a basic overview of the pumps and powerheads. You'll obviously need to consider the volume of your aquarium as well as the types of corals you're keeping. With the low flow, you want a total uh, turnover about 10 to 15 times an hour of the volume of your aquarium. Moderate flow tanks like LPS corals, you want uh, 15 all the way up to maybe 17 times an hour. And for SPS aquariums, you'll want a flow rate of 20 to 30 times an hour the volume of your, of your aquarium. Now we'll go back to pumps and powerheads, and let's look at our submersible pumps. Submersible pumps are uh, pretty much constant flow pumps. They're very useful as return pumps. You can use them to pump water through a chiller, through a UV sterilizer, uh, for media reactors as well. Um, they do need to sit in the sump or underwater, uh, with the exception of some of them, like the synchros, which can be plumbed externally if you like. Now the Ecotech Marine Vectra, again, is uh, submersible or external, so you can use it either way. A low cost option would be the TAM Rio Hyperflow pumps. Uh, very reliable pumps, uh, but sometimes a little bit noisy compared with the Synchra. The Synchras are definitely super quiet, uh, also very reliable. I must say all the pumps we offer are reliable. We've used them for years and uh, we recommend them. We try to sell and recommend products that we know of good quality because we want very happy customers. So. There you have an overview of the saltwater pumps and powerheads. Hope it was helpful, and thanks for watching, guys.